Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Sunday morning service at the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship in Laguna Beach. My name is Pamela Floodman, and I will be serving as the worship associate this morning. Our Zoom and audio visual text today are Don West Jr. running the Zoom part of the service and Paul Bogdan and Dara Skarecki here in the fellowship building. And our talented music director leading our music this morning is Carol Cole. Today, we are delighted to welcome back to UUFLB, Reverend Celia Young, who is a longtime friend of this congregation. And we are always fortunate when she is able to join us as our guest minister. Our service today is entitled, Reverse the Aging Process, embrace change. Reverend Celia is a leadership and life coach, an interfaith chaplain and a spiritual activist. And she has a lot of experience with embracing change and helping others to learn to embrace change. As an Asian immigrant, she has lived between the East and the West for her whole adult life, which affords her unique life experience and worldview. And for over 30 years, Reverend Celia has used who she is in her consulting and coaching work to achieve social justice in Fortune 500 corporations where she develops individual leaders and high functioning work teams, helping to mold healthy organizational cultures that embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion. So this is her ministry for the workplace, where she helps leaders and employees become courageous enough, being brave, as in our opening video, brave enough to speak the truth, stand on their highest values, and model for change. And now, in this quarter of her life, Ms. Young has expanded her ministry from the workplace to an individual setting, helping to heal traumatized and suffering individuals, mending broken spirit, working within congregations such as ours as a guest minister and within her own congregation as a member, worship associate and uh, choir member of the Tapestry Unitarian Universalist Congregation in Lake Forest, always with a focus on helping individuals find their own best ways to move forward for themselves. And we so appreciate this focus. Again, the service which Reverend Celia has developed for us today is entitled Reverse the Aging Process, Embrace Change. Really, whether it's as an individual or as an organization, the longer we have lived, the more history we have, the harder it can be for us to change. And I realized this week that this is the 75th year of this congregation, which began by people meeting in homes in 1948 and moved to this building in 1961. So it seems to me that 75 years is, is quite a milestone, both to be proud of, but also to think about moving forward. Um, and as Reverend Celia will help us, I think, to see today, change is inevitable and change is regenerating. So one of the joys of being a worship associate here at UUFLB is having the opportunity, but also really the challenge of finding words and music that complement the theme of each service. So this week, I wanted to find a gathering music video that captured the excitement and the possibility and change. And there is a lot of music that has been written about change, but it actually took me a very long time this week to find music that fit for me with the inherent, with the energy that's really inherent in our service title, Embracing Change. So I hope you enjoyed the gathering music video that we watched this morning, Brave by Sara Bareilles. And I have to say, I benefit by having a 23 year old daughter who has helped expose me to music that I might not have otherwise been exposed to and learned to love. But I hadn't seen the music video before and the video itself really brought even more meaning to the words that I had already come to love. 
And the more I listened, the more I thought of this as really an anthem for change and for empowerment, for unleashing our untapped sources of change for ourselves and for the world. Each Sunday, anywhere there is a service held in a Unitarian Universalist congregation, the flaming chal uh, chalice is lit. A flaming chalice is lit, which is the symbol of our faith. So if you have joined us this morning by Zoom, and I can see there are a few people who've joined the hybrid service by Zoom, I invite you to light a chalice or a candle within your home. And I didn't ask ahead of time, but I hope that our guest minister, Reverend Celia, will be willing to light the chalice here for us at UUFLB. Our chalice lighting words this morning are from Reverend Eric Walker Wickstrom, who is the former worship and music resources director for the Unitarian Universalist Association and has served many congregations in New England. Here today, in this place, with these people, may we listen so that we can hear. May we hear so that we can feel. May we feel so that we can know. May we know so that we can change ourselves and this world. May the chalice we light, light our way. So thank you, Reverend Celia, for lighting our chalice this morning and for being with us today for our time of worship. And throughout the service this morning, if you are here with us in the building, I invite you, if you wish, to come forward at any point and light a candle here in the sanctuary in recognition of whatever you are carrying in your heart today as you join us for worship. At UUFLB, we are a welcoming congregation with a commitment to work together to actively dismantle systemic racism and oppression in all of its forms. Whoever you are, whomever you love, no matter your age or gender, your ancestral or ethnic background, whatever sincere questions that you bring with you today, whatever has brought you here this morning, we welcome you to our community of mutual care, caring and serious intent to grow as spiritual and ethical beings, a community which supports each of us as we work together to make a difference in the world. And I wanna give many thanks to everyone here at UUFLB who works together each week to create opportunities for us to worship together, for us to be together in community. So this includes our board, our worship associates, everyone who takes care of this building during the week and helps to prepare each week for our Sunday morning worship service. It's a lot of work that people do. And also to run other events such as our Zoom at noon weekly discussion group. And we also know there are always more opportunities to work together. And as we move forward into this new year of 2023, there will be more to be done. So if you're looking for a way to become more involved, please reach out. As we connect with each other, this is the way in which we build community as the strong base from which we can go out and make a difference in our world. So now I think Dawn will put up on the screens for us a slide with information about upcoming services here at UUFLB over the next few weeks. Next week, January 15th, Don West Jr. will be here with us in person. He's driving back here from Nevada to lead the first of a monthly series of services that he is crafting, which focus on our Unitarian Universalist principles. So next week's service will focus on our first principle that we as a UU congregation affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person. And this series of um, worship services, Don has entitled the whole series as a being the change challenge. And this is our challenge to move forward with change. So Reverend Celia is sort of um, kicking us off today, but it's something that we're gonna be engaging with throughout this year. 
Then on January 22nd, we'll have our social justice service. So on the fourth Sunday of every month, we typically have a service that's focused on social justice topics. And this month, I was delighted to learn this week that we are going to be joined again by Jackie Nunez. And those of you who've seen Jackie speak before know that this is going to be a special service. Jackie is an educator and a storyteller and a member of the Ahashemen tribe, which is one of the local indigenous tribes covering this area of Laguna Beach and a little bit north of us and south of us. Um, and on Sunday, January 22nd, Jackie told us she's also going to be joined by her son for the service, who is a musician. So he'll be bringing his music and dancing to the storytelling that Jackie will provide. So I really encourage you to come to this service. If you know young people, I know the times that we've had um, children and grandchildren who've come when Jackie's been here, I think they've found it also an exciting service and an important part of our journey as we you know jackie speaks of her her work sometimes as journeys to the past but it's also a journey in our present and a journey to the future as we work together with the communities that are part of this area of orange county so i hope people can come to the service on january 22nd um i think next then we'll bring up a, a brief slide that has some announcements for people here within the congregation to be aware of and the first announcement is just a reminder that every month there is a group of people from this fellowship led by um, Bruce Johnson and John Mendoza who work together to provide and host a meal at the alternative sleeping location in Laguna Canyon. And I know Tapestry also hosts meals on, um, on other Thursdays um, within the month. But the first Thursday of the month, this is something that this community here has committed to doing. And um, I can look out and see a number of you here within the congregation today who take part in that work. And if there are others who want to participate, please speak to me or to Bruce and John or to Candy, and we can get you help help get you hooked up with the um, uh, email trail to give you opportunities to be part of hosting hosting that evening meal. Um, also, just a reminder that on um, Monday, every week, Mondays at noon, we hold a Zoom at noon um, discussion group and anyone is welcome to join. Um, and the group, I think, both supports each other, also engages with a topic each week that sort of helps focus discussion and conversation. Again, an important part of how we connect with each other. Our centering thought for this morning, for today's service focused on embracing change. Our centering thought comes from Pauline R. Kieser, who I hadn't heard of before, but who served as Secretary of State in the state of Connecticut in the 1990s. So Donna's put the words up on the screen, and I invite you, if you wish, to read these words together with me. And for those of you who've joined us by Zoom, if you wish, you can unmute yourselves as well. So we will read together. Continuity, Continuity gives, us roots. gives us roots. Change, Change gives, us branches. gives us branches, letting us stretch, letting us stretch and, grow and grow and reach, and new, reach heights. new heights. So thank you all for joining today, for being part of this community, for coming to visit in this community today, and for committing to make a difference. Our opening hymn this morning is number 108, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. This is a favorite hymn for me. It reminded me this week of how our lives are always evolving, always changing, always flowing on in endless song. So please join our music director, Carol Cole, in singing this beautiful hymn, and the words will be on the screen. Please stand if you would like to. My life flows on in endless song Above the lamentation I hear the real, the far 
more of him that hails a new creation through all the tumult and the strife i hear the music ringing it sounds an echo in my soul how can i keep from singing <clears throat> what though the tempest round me roars i know the truth it liveth what though the darkness round me close songs in the night it giveth no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock i'm clinging since love prevails in heaven and earth how can i keep from singing when tyrants tremble as they fear the bells of freedom ringing when friends rejoice both far and near how can i keep from singing to prison cell and dungeon vile our thoughts to them are winging when friends by shame are undefiled how can i keep from singing in the season of our life reverend richard fuchs wrote creators of all times and season and of all the seasons of our lives we gather in this place thankful for the days that have been, even those that have tried our souls, and hopeful for the days that shall be, even those that shall demand of us the best that we have of faith and hope and courage, till we have come, become one with ourselves and thee in all the seasons to come, from the glad renewal of spring to the summer autumn days of green, and gold and yellow and the shining color of fruition and harvest to the white wisdom days of winter where all things wait in patience for the change and shall bring transformation let us worship together Let us take a moment now to remind ourselves why we come together as a community. I invite you to read the words of our unison affirmation together when and if it feels right for you. If you have joined by Zoom, you may want to unmute your microphone so that your voice can be joined together with the voices here in the fellowship building. The words of the unison affirmation are on the screen and please join me in reading love, love is the spirit, the spirit of the fellowship and service, and service is the law. law this, this is, is our is great, great covenant, covenant to dwell, to dwell well together, together in peace to seek, to seek the, the truth, truth in love, love and to help, and to help one, another. one another thank you We have come to a time in our service to briefly share the important events that have touched our lives in the past week. The joys which we share are amplified so that they can extend beyond ourselves into our community. And in sharing our sorrows, we can provide for each other the support and care that are vital for all of us. So during this time of sharing our joys and concerns, we will pause the recording of the service. As started. It is as much a blessing to be able to give as it is to receive. 
And in this self-governing, self-sustaining community, we recognize that it is our responsibility to do both. And it's our responsibility to both give and receive and do these well. Our fellowship depends on the love and the generous contribution from our members. And we are empowered by these innumerable gifts that our members bring as they join in covenant with us, their time and their hard work, compassion, humor, support, and financial contribution. And all of these gifts generally, generously given are needed for this fellowship and for the continued work, good work that we can do in our world. So during this time of offering, we will be passing a basket here within the fellowship. And there is information up on your screen for those of you who are on Zoom, providing two additional ways which you can give electronically. And there are even those QR codes there that you could use or by sending a check to the fellowship. Now, please stand as you are comfortable in body, mind, or spirit. And we will join in singing to each other words of sincere gratitude. So if you can stand and actually sing to each other, we'll be singing from you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. <clears throat> Baby's going crazy. There's nothing up there. From you, I see, to you, I give. Together we shed, and from this we live. From you, I receive. To you, I give. Together we shed, and from this we live. Here's Candy. She's. Let us enter now into a spirit of prayer or meditation. You may wish to close your eyes. Rest your hands in your lap. Feel your feet firmly connected to the ground beneath you. Allow your shoulders to relax and follow your breath as you breathe in and out. In and out. I have a few words of hope to read. These are from UU Minister, Reverend Gary Kowalski. And then we will have a period of silence. With faith to face our challenges, with love that casts out fear, with hope to trust tomorrow, we accept this day as the gift it is, a reason for rejoicing.
Good morning. Happy New Year. It is my great pleasure to speak with you again. And I see new faces, familiar faces. I always have a good time when I come here. On January 22nd, we will welcome the year of the rabbit, according to the lunar calendar. Compared to the volatile year of the tiger last year, this year we're supposed to enter a very era of fluidity, quietness, and contemplation. We'll see about that. According to Chinese astrology, this year's rabbits have water element, which means they possess confidence, strength, agility, and elegance. This morning's topic around aging is not a comfortable topic, but you know me, I never pick a comfortable subject to talk about. And also aging may not fit everyone. At some point in my life, I stopped paying attention to my age. But since this is the beginning of a new year, I want to reflect a little bit on my life. This March, I will be 73 years old. As I age, I hope to become more agile and elegant like the water rabbit. Every time when I mention my age, people will say, you don't look like your age, as if they're supposed to have a picture of what we people who are age supposed to look like. Now, but I also know that people believe today's 70s is actually yesterday's 50s. Maybe because modern people are more active, engaged, and have vitality. When we are children, most of us can rely on our parents to help us feel safe. Safety comes from knowing that there are things we can count on, such as their protection, physically and emotionally. But the outside world beyond our immediate environment is full of new and unfamiliar things, knowing that there is certainty and predictability in our home we can feel free to explore and grow. I was born during my parents' escape from the communist war in China. Before that, they also went through the atrocity of Japanese war, but they managed to build a safe and secure home for me to grow up in. Besides love and protection, my parents also injected their optimism, tenacity, and courage into my vein. This is how I was able to explore the world from a safe and solid base. Now, looking back, I've done a lot of risky things, but because I took a risk, I have learned a lot. One of my major exploration was to leave my home in Taiwan and come to the US for graduate studies. Nothing was familiar including the language, the food, customs, and people. I was so scared, but I went ahead on my journey. I was 21 at the time. When we were young, we may fall and scrape our knees. We may touch the fire and bring, burn our fingers. We may run into things and people unfamiliar to us, but no big deals. Fear and curiosity come hand in hand. I have done my share of exploration and learned from those experiences. As a youth, we were daring enough to try out different things because we don't know what we don't know. We rely on our pure curiosity, innocence, and a sense of invincibility to learn our life's lessons. Creativity happens when our pores are open and we are curious 
of new ideas, ours and others. Creativity has come from playing the what if games. When we were younger and didn't have a whole lot of experience, we were able to learn from experiments and we often tend to recover from our mistakes very quickly. Throughout the 30 years of my consulting career, I have endured quite a bit of hardship and challenges when I work to combat racism and sexism. Facing all these challenges, I held my ground and fought my way through them. As I got older, I found a more clever way to deal with these racist and sexist challenges instead of confrontation. At 21, I flew thousands of miles over the ocean to come to this new land. Now, I won't even move to Long Beach, which is just up the road. <laughs> just because thinking about moving makes me very exhausted. But I wonder, have I lost my courage? Or as I get older, I have established certain comfortable routines and patterns in my life that I find very difficult to change. I'm set in my ways, but why not? I like my ways. But sometimes I wonder if I have missed the opportunity to learn something new. As we get older, life becomes more predictable as if we've seen it before. As we think we have all the answers, we know what will work and what won't work. Life went from unknown to known. This is when we run the risk of letting our lives become stale. They said, you cannot teach the old dog new trick. Why not? Because maybe because sometimes we have already decided that some new learnings are not worth our energy. <laughs> Personally, this is true when it comes to using technology. I don't understand enough about how computers work. I have managed to use them to survive. But every time something new come along with the technology, it seems so confusing and complicated. To me, and the world is also moving at a breathless speed that I not only cannot keep up with, but also have no interest trying to keep up. The question is, am I wrong to reject new things? What would I miss? Knowledge and experience give us authority and credibility. Like, I like being called a crone because it represents all the lessons I have learned by getting older. But just because I know a lot, I should not use my knowledge to boost my ego and shut the door for something I have never known before. Many of us older people are so proud of our lives, experience, and knowledge, we often are too busy teaching and not spending enough time learning. At each decade goes by, I become more and more self-assured, but then this is when I must struggle with my willingness to stay curious and let the unknown teach me. Every time someone had an idea do I rely on my past experience and dismiss the idea? Sometimes I feel quite righteous because I think the new idea is an insult to what I already know. Shouldn't I consider the merit of the idea first? When someone mentioned an idea, do I already have a justification for my saying no? How many opportunities for growth am I missing out? because of my stubbornness, laziness, or ego. In business, we often use brainstorming sessions to generate ideas. They are fun and full of energy because the purpose is to create an open space to let all ideas flourish. But when we say that a new idea won't work too quickly, we run the risk of killing the young sprout or the chance to open the window and let some fresh air in. Intellectually, we all know about this, but why do we have a hard time accepting and trying new things as we get older? Fear, anxiety, loss of control maybe? These are all ego-driven. 
What we counted on as our wisdom and experience is yesterday's news. We have no idea if they will help or work on today's or tomorrow's problems. We need to keep alive the energy of the unknown because nothing is cast in stone and nothing will last forever anyway. Buddhism teaches us the concept of impermanence. Impermanence is the opposite of the certainty and known, which are nothing but illusions. At some point, even our parents turn out to be just human, cannot be counted on all the time. We learn that there is no guarantee for safety, certainty, and answers. Buddha encouraged us to hold things lightly, knowing that they will change and disappear in the next moment. After I turned 70, all of a sudden, I came face to face to the reality that I'm going to die someday. The first time I encountered this concept, I remember I cried uncontrollably. I panicked at the fact that I'm running out of time and also to live my life or do things I still want to do. And suddenly I'm not so sure of myself anymore. I have always known it in my head, but my heart finally caught up with this indisputable, indisputable truth. Of course, plenty has happened to make this very uncertain time in the world today. The pandemic, wars, poverty, inflation, threats to democracy, deterioration of institutions have destabilized our state of mind. This causes anxiety, insecurity, and fear. We wonder if there are enough money, food, health, healthcare, cooperation, and unity in the face of increasing adversity. We cannot count on our yesterday's wisdom and life's lesson to carry us through the storm safely. The easiest thing to do is hang on to what we know or bury ourselves in denial or avoidance instead of facing the uncertainty. Thus, we ended up losing a sense of who we are. As a student of Buddhism, I have learned that impermanence is not a new discovery. Nothing stays forever. Change is always constant. This noble truth is contrary to our illusion of certainty. The older we are, the more we think we know what is true because we have based on our conclusion, on our experience and acquired knowledge. But when we believe we know everything and have all the right answers, we are like a house with its, all its windows and doors sealed. It feels very safe inside, but we will die with diminishing fresh air. To practice Zen is to come back to ground zero, which is the nothingness, the unknowing and the egoless place. This way, we won't have to suffer so much. Since we don't know anything, we have no fear and have nothing to lose control over. We can start fresh and stay open. In the places that scare you, well-respected Buddhist teacher Pema Children wrote, as human beings, we are as impermanent as everything else is. When we're thinking that we are competent, what are we basing it on? On this fleeting moment, on yesterday's success, we cling to the fixed idea of who we are and it will cripple us. Nothing and no one is fixed. Friend Oksasaki, the co-founder of Zen Hospice Project in San Francisco wrote, there's a beauty to all this impermanence like cherry blossoms that only bloom for a very short time. The gift of impermanence is that it places us squarely in the here and now. Knowing that things are inevitably must end causes us not to waste a moment to step into our lives, and live it with integrity and purpose. This way we'll let go a little bit more easily. And I think 
will become kinder to ourselves and to each other. In the fleeting moment, we can discover that we don't really know how other people feel and who they really are outside of our preconceived notion. And we don't even know ourselves that much. So this is when we can enjoy discovering ourselves and others and be pleasantly surprised by something that we have never thought about before. But if we insist on that we know that as true and the only truth, we will cling to what I like, what I want, I need, and also what I don't like, don't need, and don't want. We are fixated on our ego identity. We also cling to what we see in others that create a false separation. The more fixed views we have about ourselves and others, the harder it is for us to accept change. Hema Children also wrote, what a predicament. We think, seem to be doomed to suffer simply because we have a deep seed of fear of how things really are. Our attempt to find lasting pleasures, lasting security, are at odds with the fact that we are part of a dynamic system in which everything and everyone is in process. Unfortunately, we individuals are not only fixated on our truth, but we often also form organizations and invent religions to support and spread our truth as the only truth. As the eighth century Buddhist master Shantideva wrote in the way of Bodhisattva, impermanence is not the cause of our suffering but rather it is our resistance to the fundamental uncertainty of our situation. Our discomfort arises from all our effort to put ground under our feet, to realize our dream of constant okayness. When we resist change, it is called suffering. But when we can completely let go and not struggle against it and relax into the dynamic quality, that's called enlightenment or awakening to our true nature and to our fundamental goodness. Another word for this is freedom. Freedom from struggling against the fundamental ambiguity of being human. When we encounter ambiguity in life, it often makes us feel anxious, uneasy, vulnerable, lonely, depressed, or even just out of balance. Most of us want to avoid these emotions, so we'll do everything to get away from it and reject change. This urge is stronger as we get older. In the article called Redirecting Resisting, published in a magazine called Aging Well, Dr. Joseph Cassiana wrote, the roots of resistance to change among older adults are attributed to the fear of change, mistrust, and resentment towards anyone trying to raise an idea, giving them advice. Denial is only strategy old people rely on to manage unpleasant news. Taking away this defense may leave the elders vulnerable to even more anxiety and perceived threat that he or she can manage. They may go from healthy questioning of authority to excessive suspicion. The biggest resistance comes when they are fighting for control of their lives. I think perhaps this is why so many older people like me are having a very hard time giving up driving. On the other hand, there's a biological reason why older people resist change. A study published in the journal Neuron several years ago has described for the first time how activity in the key brain circuit that allows mammals, including human, to adapt to change faced with age. The study said the circuit involving neurons in the core part of our brain is called statriums. Stat stratium, sorry, is critical to, to developing new strategy for us to meet our life's goals. 
Research evidence show that on average, younger people find it easier than older people to cope with life's challenges by finding new way to achieve goals. When the stratum circuit deteriorate as a person ages, it will impact a person's ability to adapt to change such as discovering a dis disability or having to move. But there's more and more evidence showing the brain is similar to a muscle. The more you work it and the more it responds. So just because we are aging does not mean we should stop using our brain. They say, if you don't use it, you will lose it. This is not just about our body, but our mind too. Talking about aging might sound real depressing, but we can choose to be alive every moment in the here and now. We might not be able to extend our lives, but we can slow down or even reverse the aging process by opening the windows and let in some fresh airs and be willing to embrace change. An organization can face its aging process too, but it is built by a group of people. Individuals in it may fade away, but the organization doesn't have to because together its people will have much more energy and power to regenerate the life of this organization. They can not only open their windows to let some fresh air in, they can also open their doors to let some more fresh flood in. A refreshed and regenerated organization will reflect the history and legacy of its people so that their collective life will live on. So we begin this new year, I challenge all of us to think about the deeply entrenched truth we had held on to and question they are serving us well. If yes, cling to it. If the answer is no, be willing to open your minds and hearts to new possibilities. So here are my parting questions for you. First, what is your resistance to change? And why? Second, as an individual, how can you open yourself up and embrace new ideas and learning? Third, as a congregation, how ready are you to let in and adopt new ideas to make this, keep this wonderful institution going? Fourth, how can you use this year to open yourself to limited possibilities limitless possibilities around you and expand your truth. Namaste, maybe so. Now please stand as you are comfortable in body, mind, or spirit and join Carol in singing hymn number 1022, which is in our teal hymnal, but the words will also be on the screen. And the hymn is entitled, Open the Window. We're going to be singing verses two to five. Um, and um, please join in, this, in singing this hymn, Open the Window. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Neighbors lock the doors, build fences so high. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Don't see what to discover on the other side. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Open the window, children. Open the window. Open the window, children. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Borders round corner, borders round the sky. Let the dove fly in. The only border close to is the 
born around your mind. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Open the window, children. Open the window now. Open the window, children. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Some people have a money, some people have none. Open the window, let the dove fly in. What's the use of money if your heart's gone numb? Open the window, let the dove fly in. Open the window, children. Open the window now. Open the window, children. Open the window. Let the dove fly in. Open the window, let the dove fly in. This big gold world is in a great big mess. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Open the window, find peace and rest. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Open the window, children. Open the window. Open the window, children. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Open the window, let the dove fly in. Woo, thank you. Now is the time for us to extinguish the chalice here at UUFLB and within our homes. We extinguish this flame, but we keep its light in our hearts with its message of community, love, and justice, taking it out into the world in which we live until we are together again. Our time together is finished, but our work is yet done. May our spirit be renewed and our purpose resolved as we meet the challenge of the week to come. The chalice flame is extinguished until once again ignited by the strength of our, our communion, go in peace. Please stand as you are able and join me in let there be peace on earth. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this be the moment now with every step i take let this be my solemn 